No, to not appreciate them, it to feel like a fool, Miss Fontaine. You can't just walk in here and make a fool out of me. Do you understand? So that's why you called me back. To tell me I could make a fool of you. Yes, well, no. To tell you the, the reasons for my decision. I don't believe you. Miss Fontaine. You thought of me, didn't you? <clears throat> yes. Obviously I did. Not in the way. Please don't do that. answering that question. That's none of your business, is it? But we're having one, aren't we? We're what? An affair. An affair? Well, after what we did. What we did? You stuck your hands down my trousers. Are we going to squabble over the details? Are we going to try and work that way out? <laughs> this one did, <laughs> not an affair. I touched your genitals. I didn't ask you to touch them, did I? You did, though. There's more to it than that, surely to God. I don't believe so. So why are we coming to Dulce the minute you put your hands down my trousers? No, the minute you put talc down your boxes. I <laughs> know we're not having an affair. So stop acting like we are. Miss Fontaine, as I can honestly say, you're one of the most bizarre people that I've ever met. This film is important. Do you understand how important it is? I can see it means a lot to you. No, not just to me, to the world. I don't see. Just don't. You will. Come on, Lou. Christine Klein spent only 13 summers on this earth. She was Kerton's first recorded victim. I visited the Klein family as part of my research for the case. You wouldn't have known from the looks of them that they were only in the 40s. I didn't tell them I was representing the daughter's murderer. They welcomed me in. It was early morning and three places had been set up for breakfast. Whilst they recounted the events that took place 18 years previous, they ate. It surprised me that could eat. I kept glancing at that empty space at the table. On the 25th of May, 1930, someone had broken into their house by night. Intending only to rob them, but instead I crept into their daughter's bedroom. Where a black, black edge came upon me, I strangled her, put my fingers up her, and cut her throat. It happened time for me. They slept through the whole thing. It had taken three minutes. They didn't have any other children. Did they have a lodger? Who was that extra place set up for? The funny thing was, I dropped my handkerchief <coughs> in her bedroom. I had the next day. No, no, listen, listen, mate. I had my initials on it. P. K. The funny thing was, the girl's uncle, uncle was called. He was surprised. He was trying. 
tried for Christine's manner. For lack of evidence. For lack of evidence. But neither was he cleared. And he died with that stigma around him. I truly believe that God's on my side. I couldn't take my eyes off that empty bowl and its now cold contents. I wondered if perhaps they'd set that place up for me. They said they, said they were glad that the real killer had been caught. The next morning, I was sat in the cafe opposite his private house. They said that they hoped he would be executed. Reading about the murder in the morning paper. They said that most of his victims were still alive. Everybody, and I mean everybody, was talking about it in the paper and in the cafe. But nobody wanted to hear about them. Only him. Sitting there. Knowing. 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 Knowing that the man who had done it. That I had done it! Was still living, breathing, smiling. I had killed them. No, I had killed them. What about them? What about the victims? And nobody. Didn't they matter? Nobody knew! I said to them that they were bound to be more interested in Kerton because he had led such a unique life, whereas his victims had only been unique in their manner of dying. I wish I hadn't have said that. I couldn't take my eyes off that bowl, that spoon, that saucer, all untouched. Thirteen summers. chance to save the teddy. Confess. Five. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, what the fuck have you done? This knife, I took it from me, your kind, to penetrate the penetrator. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stop this. Stop this now. Make you cry like I cried in the dark room. Make you beg like I begged. Make you feel the steel in your ass to fuck you like a dog. <laughs> stop this. Stop this now. Uh, you're not going to hurt Alan. I know you're only kidding. He's not your friend. He is. And I'm yours. Are you? Uh, of course I am. Why did you leave? 
leave? You went to bed. From where? From here. <laughs> I went to college, I... College! <laughs> Look. Look, man, please listen to me now. You're ill. You know you are. Your head's all messed up. I'm your friend. I'm telling you. I will help you. All right? Johnny's first for you. Look, just give me the knife. Take, Take your hands off me! All right, all right, all right. Just, just, just think, man. You don't want to hurt Alan. Alan's your friend. He's our friend. I am my friend. We used to trip together. The three of us, remember? Remember the, 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 the three wasters? Remember that, uh, that, that, that time we went camping? We found those, we found those mushrooms in the ruin, and we, we just, we just. It's back back then. The two of us. You were the brains. Die with the brawn. It was better that then. Tell me what you remember. Tell him! T tell him what? Any fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> tell me. I, 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 I remember. I, I remember when. I remember when your dad. He, he is not my okay, dad. Okay, okay, not that shit, shit. Alright. Shay Hawkins. Remember Shay Hawkins? He bust my lip open. So you, so you went and found him by the waste ground. I kicked his cunning for you. You did? Kicked into book. <coughs> you did. I've never seen anyone get worse. I look good, didn't I? You did. You look good. You did, didn't I? You did. You look good. I remember every kick and every punch. You don't know what it's like. Out there in the dark, all scribbled up. Just your age in your life. I'm not afraid to kill a man. Lasses with a coat shot off. <laughs> Hot. Pouring blood all around. Let me out there. Let me do what I do. Shh, shh, shh. Just give me a knife. Please, please, just give me it. Just give me a knife. Please. Oh. Mr. Macquarie. Mr. Macquarie. Oh, I beg your pardon, Mr. Macquarie. Um, can I just confirm with you that this is your home number? Yes, obviously. And this is a BT landline, right? Yes. And um, what if I was to tell you that I could save you up to hundred pounds a month on your phone bill? Is that of any interest to you? Um, not really, no. I see. And what if I was to tell you that you could also enjoy up to twenty extra channels on your television? Is that of any interest to you? Uh, no, it wouldn't. But thanks for asking. And you will be able to enjoy the speed of up to 8 megabytes, depending on your area. I'm sorry, but I'm really not interested, and I'm not that keen on being phoned up at home. And all of that can be yours with an essentials package of just £13.99 pence a month for the first three months. Right. Well, you don't seem to be listening to me, but I said I'm not interested. I'm sorry. You're not interested? Sorry, no. Hello? 